stretching from the northern pole and northern Canada to Amazon rainforest, you experience amazing change in wilderness. You come across the freezing and barren place without trees, where only tiny brownish green plants survive in the icy ground. But walk further towards south and you enter a magical world of coniferous forests. This place has a serene beauty of wildlife where moose, caribou, wolves and different species of animals and birds are found here. Now gradually, the conifers disappear and you reach the vast sea of grassland of prairies. As you cross the grassland and go further south, you feel the scorching heat of cactus-filled deserts. Here, the temperature soars to 45 degrees. This place is without plants or grass. All you find here are thorny cactus. Trudge still down south and you reach southern Mexico where deserts and cacti disappear. Here, you find wonderful tropical trees with exotic birds chirping and insects droning around. Cross this and you arrive in Colombia and Andes mountain range. Here again, you are reminded of the cold chilly peaks of the North Canada. This descends into dense swampy forests of Amazon. Each biome has its distinctive climate and habitat, but sometimes Similar biomes occur in different places. For instance, Brazil, Africa and Southeast Asia have plants and animals with similar habitat. While the prairies of North America, China, Australia and Argentina too have similar biome. Although plants and animals that inhabit are different, they live in the similar way. Let us now feel the cold and chilly biome of the Tega region. This biome occupies a little larger area than all the tropical rainforests. The Tega biome is the second largest in size to the desert. It occupies about one-tenth of Earth's land surface. The Tega grows in the extreme weather encircling the northern hemisphere from Alaska to Japan. The trees that grow in this region are the conifers. They have their leaves throughout the year and produce cones instead of flowers. Sometimes just few conifer species such as spruces, pines or firs are found abundantly in this region. The tega that is grown in the icy land near the Arctic Circle has sometimes fully grown trees which are known as boreal forest. Some tega forest also grows along the northwestern coast of North America. Here, there is so much rainfall that tega is sometimes described as rainforest. The forest is filled with conifers rather than rainforest trees which are found near the equator. Now let us know what the word Tega means. Since a major part of Russia has dense pine forests, it is derived from the Russian language which means the marshy pine forest. Talking of the boreal forest, this too is named after the Greek god Boreas, which means the god of the north wind. Tega covers Alaska, Canada and extends to New England, Scandinavia and Japan. This region is the world's largest source of softwood for timber and paper making. It also has important reserves of fossil fuel like oil and gas. However, due to harsh weather and enormous size, it is still an original wilderness and sparsely populated. 
beyond the northern limits of Tega, the temperature is too low for any full-size trees to grow. So the biome with plants and shrubs replace Tega. This biome is known as the Thandra biome. The southern limits of Tega opens up to the forests of broad-leaved trees. And in between this, you come across the scenic beauty of forests, wetlands and lakes. Now coming to the northwestern belt of American Tega, we find this place full of forests, lakes and rivers. Canada, which is in this region, has more lakes than any other country. The Lake Anthabasca in Canada has largest deposits of tar, oil and other useful substances. The oil workers here clear the sandy soil to get the required substances. Located in the Gulf of Alaska is Kodiak Island. This was the first European colony in Alaska. Brown bears are commonly found here. Close to Kodiak Island is the world's second largest taiga in form of Denali National Park. This taiga region has tallest mountain called the Mount McKinley. The tallest point of this mountain is 6194 meters. Along the forests of Pacific Coast, from Oregon to Alaska, is wet rainforest region. This forest is more lush greener than the rest of Tega. The forests here have trees growing for more than 2,000 years. Dividing the Northwest Territory from Alaska is a huge mountain range called the Rockies. It runs nearly 4,800 kilometers long till Mexico in the south. You have the Great Bear Rainforests. It is home to approximately 2,000 grizzly bears. This place also has trees which are 1,000 years old. Let us now feel the climate of this region. Most of the year, Tega is dark and cold and covered with snow and ice. But short period of summer and spring brings in warmth where ice and snow melts and the Tega forest comes to life. The plants now have to cope up with damp soil and lot of water to collect nutrients for their growth. Favoring this, tall coniferous trees grow abundantly in this region. Similar conditions also exist in the southern hemisphere, but no Tega forests grow here. This is mainly due to large area being covered by the ocean. The Tega forests develop where growing season for the plants is at least three months, and the average temperature in the warmest month is approximately 10 degrees. Do you know an amazing difference in temperature is found in Siberia? In fact, the difference is the largest than anywhere else on this earth. In winter, Siberia's temperature drops to as low as minus 68 degrees, while in summer, it rises up to 30 degrees. A phenomenal difference of approximately 100 degrees. Tega may be cold for most of the year, but the presence of snow benefits the plants. The snow acts like a fluffy air-filled jacket insulating the trees and soil from cold, bitter air. In winter, the soil at a depth of 50 centimeters can be much warmer than the air above. This depth, the tree roots are able to take life-giving water, even if the temperature above the ground is below the freezing point. Kanifas are the main plantations of Tega region. But some broad leaved deciduous trees, which shed their leaves each year, are also found here. There is plenty of water, but it is frozen. So the plants here have to bear 
with water shortage like that in the desert during spring deciduous trees grow a new set of leaves which they have shed in autumn this is only partial since coniferous evergreens keep their needle like leaves for several years now let us talk about the soil of this region the layered soil of taiga forest is called podzol the word podzol is derived from the russian word for ash it is the color of one of the layers of this soil podzol forms due to decomposition of shedding of leaves pine needles and other waste from the trees the combination of cold and wet condition along with the decaying plant matter makes the upper layer of the soil acidic the ground which is covered with all this slowly starts decaying over the years the amount of water falling from rain hay and snow is more than the air raised by the evaporation so the extra water which sinks in the ground turns acidic this acid rich water dissolves metals such as iron and aluminum from the soil and deposits them deep down sometimes iron rich layers called iron pans stop water from draining deeper into the ground as a result soil above the iron pan gets filled with the water which drives all the air out of the soil over 100 years the decomposed plant material and soil accumulated here forms peat scientists can unlock the ancient history of the taiga from its peat pollen grains from the plants can survive for thousands of years in peat scientists collect the pollen grains from different layers of peat and can determine the life of trees which grew in the nearby areas it also tells them about the climate at that time and the relevant changes now in the northern canada and parts of siberia the taiga grows above a solid layer of frozen icy ground this frosty soil is called permafrost tree roots cannot penetrate through this icy ground so they spread sideways to collect water the trees spread their roots above the permafrost so that they can absorb sun's heat directly without allowing it to reach the icy ground seeds buried in permafrost can remain for thousands of years there are two types of taiga open and closed taiga the northern end of the taiga has the temperature which is very cold for the trees to survive so to the south of this region open taiga grows the trees growing in open taiga are generally small and lean and more widely spaced between the widely spaced trees plenty of sunlight reaches the ground lichens mosses dwarf willows shrubs and small ground plants flourish in these clearings in the warmer areas of taiga water is available to plants for longer periods of the year the trees grow more densely creating closed taiga forests The tree cover is so thick here that very little light reaches the forest floor. Shrubs and other small plants have less chances of survival in the closed taiga. Low-lying hollows of depressions in these forests collect water from nearby areas. They make the soil very wet for any trees to grow. The falling of leaves and other tree waste gets collected in these hollows and decays slowly creating good condition for the growth of mosses like sphagnum these mosses change the condition of the soil then over the decades the mosses die away creating sedimentation of soil this 
soil is then ready for new trees to grow. After talking about the climate of Tega region, we now describe the Northeastern American Tega. This belt spreads around the ancient mountains and the wet lowlands. Most of the area in this region was created by massive glaciers. This region also has a huge landscape of Hudson Bay. Since this area has large number of lakes, more than half of Canada's electricity comes from the hydroelectric power stations located in Tega. This has damaged the wilderness of Tega. However, in the last 30 years, Canada's national and provincial government had to take steps to conserve the wilderness of Tega. Some 25 years back, the Cree and Inuit people living around the southern part of Hudson Bay had lost their land for dams and power stations. This was done to provide power to Quebec and Ontario. Farmers too have been clearing most of the forests along the rivers, thus destroying the wilderness of this place. But having realized the importance of maintaining wilderness of Tega, plans to further develop the wilderness have been curbed. Talking of lakes of this region, one cannot forget the world's largest freshwater lake. This is Lake Superior, which is almost as big as Ireland. There are other small lakes too surrounding this lake. And they are Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, and Lake Nipigon. Just above this lake is a huge gorge, which is 152 meters wide and 107 meters deep. This place is known as Quimet Canyon. Going further, you come across the Canadian Sheet. It is a flat area covering most of the Northern Canada. It is believed that this area was once a towering mountain range which was denuded and is made of oldest rocks in the world. Manicouagan Reservoir in the Canadian Shield is a natural reservoir which was once a vast asteroid crater. Coming towards the Labrador Sea, you embrace a large peninsula with rugged coasts and high cliffs with inlets of the sea. Here, many islands were formed by glaciers. One such island is Newfoundland. This place was visited by the Viking explorers some 500 years before Columbus could reach America. Let us now talk about the Tega plants and trees. Trees dominate the Tega, but they do not have the diversity of tropical forests due to the extreme conditions of survival. There are very few species of plants and conifers as compared to other tropical and temperate regions. Since the end of the last ice age, some 10,000 years ago, glaciers have receded from Tega. Very few glaciers in some parts of Alaska and Norway now flow through Tega regions. In many parts of Tega, trees have to get water and nutrients from the soil just one meter below the ground. During the freezing winters, they have to survive the harsh weather and hold on to all water which they can get. For this, the conifers have needle-like leaves having thick wax coats that stops water from leaking out and also stops the snow to accumulate on the leaves. It also acts like a shield protecting the leaf. Dense Tega forests create their own environment. The sheltered, shaded conditions trap the moist air, reduce wind speed and maintain the existing temperature. The leaves 
photosynthesize and grow whenever the sun shines during short warm summer. Beneath the forest floor, many fungal hyphen grow, which provide nutrients and protect the trees from disease and harmful soil bacteria. In return, trees create right conditions for hyphens to flourish. They shed dead leaves, on which these hyphen feed. They also provide sugar for them through their roots. Without hyphae, the canine would not flourish and small tega plants such as orchids would not survive. The plants of the forest floor grow in dull and dim light. Some plants bear nectar-rich flowers to attract insects to pollinate them. Plants such as cowberries, wintergreens, star flowers have white flowers which attract bees and butterflies and this makes the dull forest look lively and colourful. Most of the conifers produce scaly structures called cones. This is equal to a flower of a plant. Male cones tend to be smaller than female cones and these mature early. They produce pollen grains which are released in the air when the cone opens up. The pollen is carried by the wind and caught by the open female cones. The male and female pollen cells fuse inside the female cone and produce seeds. This fusion of male and female cells is termed as fertilization. The female cone does not open till the seeds ripe. The ripe seeds then fall out of the cone and are carried by wind to find a suitable place to grow. The entire breeding process takes about 15 months. Plants do not always rely on transport of pollen to spread their growth. Many plants are able to produce seeds without receiving pollen from other plants. The common wood sorrel and mealy produced white flowers to attract insects and can also pollinate on their own. They produce new plants by growing underground stems that develop independent roots. The trees that grow in North American taiga are typical around the world. The spruces and firs cover large area while deciduous trees such as birches, oak, Douglas fir and maple are more common towards south. The coastal forest has giant redwood trees which are unique. Spruces grow slowly and need damp soil throughout the year. In winter, these trees look very attractive as their dark green color contrasts to the white snow. They also have a special place in Nordic folklore which says they are home to mischievous gnomes, goblins and trolls. In Europe and North America, people buy conifers to decorate their homes during Christmas. Different species are chosen in different countries. The link between conifers and Christmas goes back more than 1,000 years. As per the folklore tradition, Saint Boniface, an English missionary in Germany, stumbled across people worshipping an oak tree dedicated to God Thor. In fury, Boniface cut down the tree fir began to grow in its place. Since then, fir trees, also known as Christmas tree, has been linked with Christian worship. Beneath the forest floor, small plants find great difficulty in survival. The trees cut out sunlight, take away water and nutrients from the soil. They also shed twigs, leaves and other waste which hampers the growth of small plants. Very few plants can survive under this dense forest canopy. But then nature is kind 
and gives these plants an opportunity to survive and thrive. If there is a clearing of trees due to either felling or forest fire, these plants grow quickly and spread their seeds before a new tree takes over the space. A few shrubs like junipers, wild roses and alders can survive under thick canopy of trees. The fruits of these shrubs provide food to the animals of this region. The tangled branches of these shrubs provide shelter to the animals. Animals disperse seeds of these fruits and thus help in growth of these shrubs. After small shrubs, we talk of still smaller plants like mosses and lichens. They cover the tree trunks and damp ground of taiga. They photosynthesize, but unlike plants and trees, they do not have true leaves. Plants that do not have true leaves, roots and stem are known as thalophytes. They take nutrients from the soil but do not have roots. They reproduce sexually but do not produce pollen grains. They release sperms in water which fertilize giving rise to new plants. They absorb water and minerals directly from snow and rain. A few deciduous trees which shed their leaves in winter also grow in taiga. Birches, oak, elm, beech, aspen and poplars grow in Europe and Asia. The European taiga stretches across the continent from Scotland to the Urals in Russia. In the West Europe, they grow around lakes and wetlands. While in East, they cover huge featureless lowland. The tree cutting, sheep and deer gazing here has changed the original forest. Coming towards Norway and Sweden, the conifers here were badly damaged due to the acid rains created from the pollution of the UK and Germany. Entering Strebus de Lange, the Norwegian National Park, the taiga here grows till far northern end. Very close to this is the Kola Peninsula. This part of Scandinavia is in Russia. It is an important mining center and has several hydroelectric power plants along its rivers. The Ural mountain range separates Europe from Asia. This region is rich in metals such as copper, nickel, gold and platinum. The Pya Haki in Finland is a protected forest area. Most of the trees here are more than 250 years old and a few even date back from 14th century. The people have been living in Tega region for more than 100,000 years and have adapted to bitter cold and chilly climate of this region. Animals too have adapted to live in cold conditions. With this cold note, let us now watch what happens next?